know what the baby's name was before it was the baby? The baby Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's so awesome. Dude, he used to wear a he wore a diaper to South by Southwest in 2017. <laughs> I was like, I'm the baby Jesus. <laughs> his, he said that like. Did his, the baby Jesus wear a diaper? <laughs> yeah, dude. Hi, my podcast. What's up? You're watching Hi, Mine, the greatest podcast that ever existed. It's an excellent show. Excellent show. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, you know, underground music. We talk about it all on here, uh, but you may be noticing a little change in scenery and decor because, you know. I'm really the only person, it seems like, on this podcast. The only one. Only personality. But um, anyway, Graydon Weaver, our, my great and wonderful co-host, is out of town at a wedding. His sister's wedding and, coincidentally, his own wedding. So, <laughs> I don't know what that's about. But um, he's from the country. It's, you know, different, Swan, Tucky, different baby. rules out there. So, uh, wish him well on his journey. He doesn't know that this is happening, and it's and not... And congratulations, early congratulations on the birth of his first child. Their first child, I suppose. Oh, wow. <laughs> I didn't even know about that, but, yeah. Could right. join twins, in fact. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's like he and I. That's like he and I usually can join twins. But um, anyway, this is Jacob Sigman. If you uh, didn't didn't recognize, a uh, wonderful pop musician and friend of mine who is willing to sit in here for the day. And we're gonna talk about the 2020 Grammy Awards nominees list. Make our predictions. And Jacob is a future Grammy winner. So oh, that's okay. how. It, yep. <laughs> uh, check that's out supporting actor. Fine. We're gonna get the plug out of the way anyway. So get, check out Jacob's music. That's the only reason he really wanted to come on, and I had to pay him fifty thousand dollars. So, all right. You really want to talk about it? Uh, no. Uh, all right. Let's get into it. The uh, we'll go in the general field first. That's we're just gonna go right in order of the way they list them here. Uh. General Field, Record of the Year. So Record of the Year and Song of the Year are split up. And I think it's is Record of the Year for production and then Song of the Year for songwriting. Is that generally the way they do it? Um, producer, really? engineer, and mixers. That's why it's, yeah, songs for for record and, um, oh, okay. and, and song. So yeah, so record is generally for the producers, the engineers. It's kind of like the sound of the song, not necessarily the song writing. That's how it That's really it. interesting. Mm-hmm. I never knew that. Mm-hmm. Fun fact, I know very little about music. Meaning like <laughs> the industry. The industry yeah, yeah, of yeah. music. Yeah. And about a lot of these artists, I feel like I probably... Cool. Not as hip to them as Riley is, so this I honestly fun for me too. I haven't looked over these that much or like made my decision about any of them. I've just kind of like I glanced at them and then was like, oh, we got to do a podcast about this. But um, record of the year: Hey Ma, Bon Iver, Bad Guy, Billie Eilish, Seven Rings, Ariana Grande, Hard Place by Her, Talk, Khalid, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus, Truth Hurts by Lizzo. And Sunflower by Post Malone and Sway Lee. So, one thing that I think is interesting is like when these are, is this album of the year? No, 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 no. These are songs. Okay, I was going to say. Old Town Road's not an album. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> they're just titling their album or their album after like their most popular song. No, so that's the difference between record and, and song again is like record is just, it's one record, it's a song, but it's about the producing and the engineering. And oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, any first impressions here? Have you heard all of these songs? Um, I'd say I've heard about half of them. Mm, good. Okay. Well informed. <laughs> uh, Maybe, no, I've, you know what? I've yeah. probably heard them all. I've probably, like, actively chosen to listen to half of them. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would say that of these songs, my actual favorite, if I'm just judging on, like, song quality and, like, what I like to listen to is Hey Ma by Bonnie Iver, but I think it has the least chance of winning of all of these. I agree. Yeah. What's your <laughs> rationale? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense for record of the year. A lot of the time, I feel like they use this as kind of like, like they talk about this in like a, it's usually like a moment. Like there has to be kind of a moment associated with it. Mm-hmm. And while Hey Ma is a great song, the cultural impact is the lowest of anything on here and by a long shot. So... Yeah. That's where I see it struggling, obviously. And I, I feel like the last time I remember the Grammys taking a chance on some, like, random indie artist was Bon Iver when he won, yeah. won Album of the Year. Yeah, and but, then people said he was, like, a homeless guy on stage. Yeah, no, but I do love that song. And the production especially. I feel like Bon Iver always 
is like pushing the envelope. Mm, you know, yeah. so I'm glad that he's on here. I'm glad that he's getting that nod. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like a lot of the songs on here. I like Bad Guy a lot. I think that that had, has a really good chance of winning. Um, I think Old Town Road has a really good chance of winning, and I like that song probably as much as, as Bad Guy. Like, those are my two favorites on here that aren't Hey Ma. Yeah. And I really like what Old Town Road... I feel like it's kind of symbolic of our time in which right. genre does not matter really anymore. Mm. And, like, I think that people that are at the cutting edge of music are the people that are, like, breaking down those barriers, you know? Right. Yeah. All right. Official favorite and prediction. I'm going to go with my favorite is Hey Ma, and uh, my official prediction is Bad Guy. That's what I think uh, it's going to be. Yeah. I think my favorite is Hey Ma. I think Old Town Road is going to win, but yeah. Okay. Cool. It's locked in. Album of the year. So we've got I, I, Bonnie Vare, Norman Effing Rockwell by Lana Del Rey. Uh, geez, Lana, tone it down a little <laughs> bit. Uh, when We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Billie Eilish. Thank You, Next, Ariana Grande. I Used to Know Her by Her. Uh, Seven, the EP by Lil Nas X. Cause I Love You, Deluxe. By Lizzo. That's going to win. And Father of the Bride, Vampire Weekend. That's cool. I, it looks like they've got a pretty interesting, like a pretty cool genre spread. I mm-hmm. like that. I feel like, wait, so favorite and then. Favorite and win. prediction is that, that's how I think. And any snub, if any, anything like feels snubbed uh, that stands out to you. Uh, Ventura feels a little snubbed, but. Really? Do you like Anderson Peck that much? Yes, he's the greatest. It's on here somewhere. I saw it in the nominations. Um, yeah, well, I don't know. What do you think? Um, my overall analysis here is that um, I think almost everything could go to Billie Eilish this year. I think there. that's like... That is like, you can always tell when the Grammys are going to like really like somebody and Billie Eilish is like perfect for them. It's a crossroads of a lot of different things. Production wise, it has a great story to it. She'll be like one of the youngest artists ever to win big, you know, the big four uh, awards. Um, You know, production by her brother. Whoa. Wow, that's crazy. Production by her brother Phineas. and Her brother's name is Phineas O'Connell. Mm, Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. And then her name's Billie Eilish, so. Um, I think that... It, you ever seen that uh, Disney movie, Luck of the Eyelash? Yeah, that one's one of my favorites. The He throws the basketball behind his back and makes it, right? Yeah, and then he wins a Grammy. That's sick. Yeah, I guess you're right. She probably... I can see her... I can see her winning, like, everything. So, like, my mind always says, like, that's going to be the one. I think that the sleeper in this category is Father of the Bride by Vampire Weekend because I think it's like a super polished album that when you think about these categories, there's like a lot of people who listen to different genres. They all get to make a decision about the big four. And so it doesn't mean that there's just a bunch of pop critics listening to these albums and like, or a bunch of rap critics listening to these albums. Everybody is making like everybody in the Academy is making a decision. And to me, I feel like Father of the Bride's very palatable and seems like masterful songwriting that pop songwriting but for a rock album and Mm. so i think it will appeal a lot to a lot of the older audience that gets to make a decision about this like the music industry um you know it's it's interesting to me like as i've been a fan of vampire weekend like since their first album i feel like was when i started listening to them and mm -hmm. that's like kind of a rare thing for me i feel like with artists and i don't know if it's just because of how my taste has changed but every album that they put out, I felt like was pushing at pop music. Right. And yeah. I didn't necessarily feel the same way about this album. I mean, I thought it was really good. And like you said, like really well written. And I mean, it's, yeah. it's Vampire Weekend. But it, it didn't feel like, like modern vampires of the city felt like they were experimenting with uh, like electronic elements. Definitely. And like I, when I heard they're releasing another record, I was like telling all my friends like, oh, there's going to be 808s. There's going to be auto yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be crazy. And that wasn't the case. And there was some, but there yeah. was some. It's mostly a classic rock sounding. It sounds like a classic rock album. Yeah, yeah. Which is, 
interest an interesting statement to make. Yeah. And I think, honestly, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It stands out to me. I definitely think that yeah. people will sleep on that one. I think that one has a shot. But my... Generally, my gut says that when we all fall asleep, where do we go? Billie Eilish is going to win. Um, of these albums, my actual favorite is also the Billie Eilish album, for sure. Yeah, not even close, honestly. I didn't listen to it. The Billie Eilish one? You'd love that album. You really? should listen to okay. it. Yeah. Um, I heard an interview on the radio where they were talking to Billie Eilish, and they asked her about her artistic process, and she was like, I don't know, like, it just comes to me, like, I think, like, the trick is just, like, not to try. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, fuck this. I've been, like, writing so hard. <laughs> okay, boomer. This whole time. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. So, so I'm salty, but I got to give it a chance. It's yeah, probably she's, fire. She's so good, dude. She's okay. so sick. Okay. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, I don't know. I think, like, I've heard every album here, except for I haven't heard the whole Her album. I've heard songs from it, but the um, the Bonnie Vare album is not my favorite Bonnie Vare album by any means, but... I also understand why it's here. It's a good, it's a good album, well produced, and it's a the name recognition really helps him. Yeah, because he did win that Grammy, and a lot of people were like, "Whoa!" Yeah, and then now they all know his name, no matter what. And he works with Kanye and all that. So yeah. All right, quick, you got to give me your uh, my who I think is gonna win. Who you think is gonna win, and your favorite album here? Which, um, yeah, I think that Lizzo's gonna win. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. I think. Well, I mean. You know, Lizzo is a real force. I think that her music is really cool. Like, it doesn't always hit with me be just, like, because of the genre, you know? But I think that everybody can appreciate the pop appeal. Not only that, I think that what she stands for in the music industry mm-hmm. is, like, inspiring to a lot of people. And, like, especially the time that we're in. Um, right. I think that the statement... Is like kind of like you said with Billie Eilish, like the story that's behind it. I think mm. that people would want to see Lizzo recognized for what she does as an artist and for what she stands for for like everybody that yeah. supports her. I think that will happen in other categories, and I will also say like I'm just not a fan of the music very much, but you know, yeah. But she's from Detroit, dude. So we gotta we gotta rep our girl Lizzo. There you go. That song. Uh, the one that's like, that song goes. Yeah. There's some good ones. But that one that sounds like the, that girl is a real crowd pleaser. <laughs> yeah, the one that sounds like Ray Remmer. <laughs> that is the, was the biggest song in the world for a second. Um, anyway, so yeah, your prediction is Lizzo. And do you, do you have a favorite here? Have you... Um, probably the... I guess I don't know. I, I guess not. I don't know the all, the list well enough. Mm. But I do like her a lot. Nice. Yeah, it seems like you would. Probably. And I feel like she's one of those artists <laughs> that it's like it's crazy because I was just having this conversation with Frankie, my friend Frankie, yep. the other day about her, mm-hmm. and I was like, I'm not super familiar with her discography. And then I like realized I don't know. It seems like is she like super popping on the radio? Yeah, I mean, she was nominated for a Grammy for her EP for the record of the year, for album of the year. Okay. Like I know before. that, I mean, I feel like the only, I probably have heard her music. Yeah, But definitely. I know that she had that Daniel Caesar collab. Right, yeah. Which is like one of my favorite songs for sure. Yeah. So i guessing out of those, out of these, <laughs> that would be my favorite. I'm guessing, <laughs> nice, okay, <laughs> good. Uh, this is all about guessing, this, this podcast. So yeah. anyway, uh... All right, three song of the year. So this one's about the songwriting. Ooh. All right, Always Remember Us This Way, which is uh, the Lady Gaga. I guess that's just Lady Gaga, but it's from that Bradley Cooper thingy. What's that movie? A Star is Born. Eh, that could be it. Uh, Bad Guy Billie Eilish, Bring My Flowers this Now. This is a songwriter's award. Ooh, that's cool. Uh-huh. Bring My Flowers Now, Brandy Carlisle, Hard Place, Her, Lover, Taylor Swift, Norman freaking Rockwell, uh, Lana Del Rey, Someone You Loved by Louis Capaldi, and Truth Hurts by Lizzo, which is the one that you were talking about that sounds like Ray Remmerd. Okay. Uh, well, one thing that I think is really interesting out of this list, uh-huh. and she's not my favorite person, but I think it's kind of sweet that Taylor Swift is the only listed songwriter on her Grammy-nominated Song of the Year. That's pretty fucking badass. Yeah. Because 
and not to discredit the other artists that I'm sure had a role in mm. their songs as well, but they did. I think yeah, most that, of them. Yeah, but I think that wow. What? S- no, but that's the case with Billie Eilish too. Yes. Just right. Yeah, her and her brother. Oh, okay. Her and her brother wrote her whole album. That is amazing. How old is she? Seventeen. Wow, I feel I am like a boomer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's sick. Um, yeah, dude, she's great. What is your prediction, and what's your favorite? My favorite of these songs is Bad Guy, and my prediction is Lover by Taylor Swift. You think Lover's going to win? Yes. Because I think Taylor Swift give Taylor something. Swift isn't nominated in major categories, and I do think that this song had more impact. I know a, like stuff about this song, and... Mm-hmm. I don't know, something about it. It just like it's a gut feeling, but for me, I feel like Taylor Swift is gonna win this one. It's a songwriter's award. For some reason I can just see that being, first of all, a good story because of the whole uh controversy with her and uh Scooter Braun trying to, you know, the whole repossession of her songs, she doesn't own her songs, those whole that whole the yeah. re-recording of her songs, all that stuff. Seems like it'd be a big triumph for her. Um, and I also think that as a song, just from a songwriter's standpoint, it stands out to me on this list. Yeah, that song is a jam. Um, I don't even like it that much. I just feel like it's going to win. Okay. I like it. I like that song. Mm. Um, I'm going to go like... ahead real quick and just say that the Louis Capaldi song is bullshit. <laughs> uh, you know what's funny, though? And the, like... the Lady Gaga one, I'm sure, isn't that good because it's from a movie. Songs from movies are never good. Uh, uh, unless it's Where Is My Mind by the Pixies at the end of, uh, don't do that on here. Uh, <laughs> the end of, uh, what's it called? Fight Club. And then Bring My, F- I'm sure the Brandy Carlisle song isn't that good either. Um, or wait, did she write it for somebody else? For Tanya Tucker. Uh, I don't know that one then. Who's Tanya Tucker? Yeah. Probably a country singer. Okay. Yeah. That sounds about right. Yo, incidentally, I just started listening to this podcast called Dolly Parton's America. I heard, heard about, about this. Yeah, yeah. Oh my lord, she's mm. amazing. Did yeah. you know that she wrote "And I Will Always Love You"? And I, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't know that. Um, my favorite, I don't know because I haven't heard enough of them. Probably "Bad Guy." Mm. I, I also really like "Lover," though. I don't know. That's a sick song. Louis Capaldi's hilarious. I feel like I only started listening to his music because of how funny he is. And he definitely made me feel a little bit more comfortable in my own skin. Oh, jeez. All right. <laughs> Keep it moving. <laughs> What's your prediction? Um, dude, honestly, you have to stop going first because you always make such a good case for it that I just want to say what you said, but then I feel like I have to go with my second choice. That's so. why I won Best Podcaster Award at the last year's Grammys. Fuck yeah. I mean, heck yeah. It's all right. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to go with the Tanya Tucker number. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I like that we're picking stuff we don't know. Any, like, that's a good. Anyway. Yeah. Tucker. I barely even know her. Oh, geez. All right. Anyway, <laughs> literally. But uh, best new artist, Black Pumas, Billie Eilish, Lil Nas X, Lizzo, Maggie Rogers, Rosalia, <laughs> Tank and the Bangas, Yola. Um, best new artist? Mm-hmm. I feel like, oh man, okay, that's tough. I'd say probably Lizzo, maybe Billie Eilish, maybe Maggie Rogers. Mm. This is sweet though, a lot of girl power, which is awesome. Um, Yeah, I would say Lizzo or Billie Eilish probably. Uh, yeah, I think that those are probably the two favorites, maybe Lil Nas X, but I think it's pretty much a three-way uh, race between Lil Nas X, Billie Eilish, and Lizzo. Uh, I think Rosalia is sweet. I wish she could win that Grammy. I think she's going to win a different one, probably. Um, but yeah, I'm going to, my, my favorite is Billie Eilish. I hope she wins. And then I would say that I think Lizzo will probably win that one. For some reason, nah. Actually, no. I think Billie Eilish is gonna win. She's my prediction and my favorite. Mm. So, I, I feel like 
the sometimes the the nominee list is like almost more indicative of where we're at than the winner. You know, I feel like the winner maybe the is chosen more for story. I think kind of, but I think that the winner definitely it definitely means something. I it like I feel like it means something in retrospect always. Like That's Casey true. Musgraves winning last year like yeah. makes so much more sense after than it did before. Like I maybe couldn't have guessed it. And I guessed I guessed that one. You might have guessed that then maybe yeah. Oh, might have guessed? I guessed that one. <laughs> well, I wish there was a podcast to prove it, but I'm just saying, you know, like I did it. I probably wouldn't have picked it, but then in my mind afterwards was like Duh. Yeah. But at the same time, like, you know, and it's I feel just like kind it, of like... It also has to do with, like, the fact that Casey Musgraves won last year means that they... I feel like Maggie Rogers has less of a chance of winning this year. Mm. You know? Because, like, the, 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 like, the genre transition from, like, acoustic... Or not acoustic in, like, the folk sense or anything, but, like, instrument-based music to sample-based music, like, kind of the supremacy of hip-hop... Right. Almost feels like there should be... Like these best new artists should be genre specific, but it's like you can't do that. Yeah, it'd be too many. You know, so We're they kind of have taken to... so long doing it this way. That, I mean, imagine if there was. Oh, a does genre this usually specific. go quicker? I'm sorry. But, well, our our yeah, no, it's fine. But I feel like you know who won the year before Casey Musgraves. Uh, album of the year. No best new artist. Oh, when did Casey Musgraves win best new artist? Oh, she won, she won album, album of the year. Of the year last what year. won the year before that? Wasn't it a hip hop album? The year before that was. Okay, so what year was Beck? Beck won over To Pimp a Butterfly. So that's a what? 2016. So then, man, I am, I'll look it up. All right. Albums of the Year, Grammys. I'm going to look it up faster. It's okay. Wow. 2019? Wait. 2018? Okay. 2019, Casey Musgraves. Bruno Mars was 2018. Oh, okay. Well. year before that was Adele. Sorry. Adele. (laughs) And then (laughs) Taylor Swift and then back. Okay, maybe not then. Wow, what? Where's... What? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that it really has to do with it. It's not really a pendulum swing every time. I think it's just more so like it's kind of racist. Jesus Christ. Uh, no, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, rap albums don't usually win. So I don't know. Okay. Um. Anyway, yeah, Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish, do you pick on this? Um, I'd say Lizzo. You think Lizzo's going to... If you want to say about Billie Eilish, I'll say Lizzo. Oh, okay. Just balance it out. All right. Now we're in pop. Best pop solo performance. Uh, Spirit, Beyonce. I think that's... Is that from Lion King? I don't know. Bad Guy, Billie Eilish. Seven Rings, Ariana Grande. Truth Hurts, Lizzo. You Need to Calm Down, Taylor Swift. I know you're a big You Need to Calm Down fan. I do like that song. So this is about performance. So it's like vocal, or instrumental pop, rec- pop recording is what it says here. But like... You know, the performance of the artist themselves. Oh. Which is why I feel like this is one where Bad Guy will not win. Yeah. Um, because it's not quite a vocal performance like, you know, that of an Ariana Grande or a Taylor Swift song. But, or a Beyonce song. Um, I think Truth Hurts is going to win this, though. Because I think that it's a performance, even though it's not quite... I mean, she sings, obviously. Liz is a great singer, but, like, it's not quite as, you know, pop vocal the way that you would say an Ariana Grande song is, but it's kind of the bombast of everything in that song. Yeah, that song is, is bombast. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, I think you're probably right. I think she probably wins that. Okay. I really don't like Seven Rings. You don't? No, it's just, like, the these are a few of my favorite things song. Right, yeah. Which is a good one. That was a banger from uh, from that movie about the... The Germany. Anyway, best pop duo group performance. More like the German poop performance. You know what I mean? Anyway. Uh, oh, I didn't know where it was. Okay. Coming uh, up top. Boyfriend by Ariana Grande and Social House. 
Not a big fan of that song except for the bass line. Sucker, Jonas Brothers, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X, and Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, <laughs> Sunflower, Post Malone, and Sway Lee. Senorita by Shawn Mendes, Camila Cabello. So what are we what are we thinking here? Old Town Road. This one goes Old Town Road all the way. Yeah. Yeah, it has I feel to. I like that one's pretty easy. All right, we're skipping. We're skipping through. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Uh, best traditional pop vo- vocal album. We're skipping it. Yeah. Who cares? Michael Bublé. Streisand. Uh, best pop vocal album. The Lion King by Beyonce. Like I said, all music from movies is terrible. Uh, when we all got fall asleep, where do we go? Billie Eilish. Thank you. Next, Ariana Grande. Number six collaborations project. Ed Sheeran. And lover Taylor Swift. So this is about the singing, pop vocals. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Well, if it's about the singing, I'm going Ariana on this one. I think Ariana's gonna win. Um, obviously, my favorite album here is the Billie Eilish one, and obviously the least favorite album of everyone is the Ed Sheeran one. Um, I mean, come on. He did like it's like a he has a song with like P and B rock on there. I don't need I don't need that, you know. Mm-hmm. But I'm not so sure if I need it either. But I do respect him. Jeez. Oh, I know that's a point of contention. Uh, who do I think is gonna win? Mm. Uh, does Beyonce sing the Circle of Life on that album? Do you know? I don't know. Didn't listen to it. <clears throat> okay, that's a good song though. The Circle of Life. Moves us all. Oh, wait, no, it's not. It's for a movie. Never mind. Sucks. Uh, yeah, let's go Ariana. Run it up. All right, Ariana, run it up. Dance electronic music. We'll see how many of these we skip. Uh, best dance recording. Have you heard any? I haven't heard any of these songs. Mm, no. I hope Skrillex and Boys Noise wins so that Ty Dolla Sign gets a best dance recording uh, Grammy. Anyway. That's cool. Uh, best dance electronic album. I hope Flume or Tycho win because I know their names. Uh, I know all these people's names except for this apparat. Yeah. I like red jumpsuit apparat. I only know those two. All right. Contemporary instrumental music. Okay. Um, Explosions in the Sky. I hope they win. Lettuce, baby. Come on. Okay. We're rooting for lettuce then. But we're moving on. Rock. Best rock performance. Shout out Tuan. Uh, Pretty Waste by Bones UK. Oh, it's got to be Bones Brit. UK. I thought, isn't that, I think that's a show my parents watch. But anyway, uh, This Land, <laughs> Gary Clark Jr. History Repeats by Brittany Howard. Woman, Karen Owen, Danger Mouse. Two Bad Rival Sons. Danger Mouse. Back in it. Let's go Brittany Howard. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She's amazing, dude. I like... Saw her randomly at the Fillmore by mm-hmm. accident, and holy cow. Yeah, she's great. She's incredible, yeah. From Alabama Shakes, if you don't know. Yeah, yeah. you know. My uh, parents just started watching Poldark. Oh, really? Yeah. That's a real season. parents oh my God. thing to watch. I'm like, this goes, like, it really seems like it stands in contrast to who they are as people, but. When I get home sometimes, my dad will just be like, what's up, Riley? You and your friends been watching Poldark? <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, that's how I know you just, you've been watching it. Like, <laughs> yeah. No way. Because uh, I'm not old as shit like you, Dad. Yeah. He hasn't watched, don't worry. Um, I just really don't like where Demelza's character goes in season two, so that's when I stopped watching. I haven't seen a single thing of it. Anyway. It's bad. Best metal performance. Okay. Death Angel. Uh, let's go with Kill Switch Engage. Yeah, Engage. Uh, not really. They suck. Best rock okay. song. Uh, Fear Inoculum by Tool. Give Yourself a Try by the 1975. Oh, I love that song. Harmony Hall, Vampire Weekend, History Repeats, Brittany Howard, This Land, Gary Clark Jr. And uh, my favorite is Give Yourself a Try by the 1975. I love that song. Yeah. And I hope, I think it's going to win. I think it's going to win too. I think people are sleeping on it too. I think people are sleeping on it. I think it could have... Uh, As a song or like... I think it could have had a 1975. Like, what do you mean? I mean, I think it could have had a like a nomination for record of the year. Oh, or song of the year. Yeah. Like, I feel like it was very like a it was a cultural moment. It deserved a little more. Rock album of the year too. 
Do they have it? Are they like? Oh yeah, that's else? actually the biggest snub is that they're not nominated for like anything. Yeah, they might be on. No, I feel like they're not even on rock album. That's crazy. What was that's, it? They're so good. Like they, I think, like and you know they're both amazing artists, but like the the respect that artists like Vampire Weekend get, like I think that. The 1975, because they, like, have so much pop appeal and are, mm-hmm. like, people kind of consider them to be, like, a boy band or what have you, they, like, don't get the respect they deserve, I think. Well, I know? think that that probably will come later like it did for bands like Vampire Weekend. That's kind of the thing is, like, it takes this long for all of that year, those years of recognition to kind of, like, get to that level. You know yeah. what I mean? But anyway. Best rock album. Who cares about this? I mean... I know some of these bands from high school. <laughs> Bring Me the Horizon, Case the Elephant, The Cranberries, I Prevail, Rival Sons. Jesus. Grow up, Grammys. Grow up, Grammys. Uh, alternative. Best alternative music album. UFOF, Big Thief. Assume Form, James Blake. I, I, Bon Iver. Father of the Bride, Vampire Weekend. And Anima, Tom York. Wait, isn't that when you like have to like squirt water up your butt? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Cool, Tom Anima York. Anima of the state. All right, so Tom York is into butt stuff. That's cool. Right. Yeah. Um. Actually, no. Wait. I think Anima is. Uh. It's that thing where like, uh, you get really cold all the time and your skin like you bruise easily. Oh, I thought it was like uh, cartoon porn. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it's close. It's uh, a little double step there. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah. I think that... I think Father of the Bride is going to win this. And really? I, and I wish UFOF would win it. Probably. I also wish UFOF would win That's it. my favorite album on here. Shout out Big Thief. It's really yeah. cool to see them Shout get Shout out Adrian Lanker. Nom. Yeah. I feel like they've been at least... I don't know. It's funny because like... You were talking about this phenomenon, how like the the um, like music periodicals, like Pitchfork, etc., yeah, really like critics, really like Big Thief, maybe more so than like the general public. The general public. Yeah, I'm surprised that they got this nomination, but it also kind of proves yeah. the whole thing. Like people in the music industry think Big Thief is like the next big thing, and generally like Pitchfork readers. They might be by the influence of Pitchfork like Big Thief a lot, but apparently there's kind of like a a little bit of a distinction uh, made between the hype uh, of the music writer community versus the hype of everybody else about Big Thief. So I don't know. I love them. Yeah, I think they're great. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to say Father of the Bride wins it and Big Thief should win it. But I also think James Blake has a chance to win this one. That's true, yeah. Um, because of kind of like... The whole he has songs with Travis Scott and Metro Boomin and stuff. So I feel mm. like people at the Grammys will like be like, yeah, James Blake, like, you know, while more widely accepted across multiple genre. Has he ever won a Grammy before? Probably in association with things, but I don't know that he's won one himself. Because I feel like he's was a real pioneer, you know. Yeah, but I feel like he and Bonnie Vare kind of tread the same path a little bit. That's true. So I think you could make the argument that he that, did it first. That James Blake did it first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When did... I don't know. I can't do the math. But Bon Iver's, like big first big album was for Emma, right? Yeah, which was like 2009 or something. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, who cares? All right, R&B. Best R&B performance, uh, Love Again, Daniel Caesar and Brandy. Could have been Her and Bryson Tiller. Exactly How I Feel, Lizzo and Gucci Mane, Roll Some Mo, Lucky Day, and Come Home, Anderson Pack, Andre 3000. So. My favorite's the Pack Track. Pack Track. That one's pretty cool. I like the Lucky Day, uh, Lucky Day song. I think it's cool that Lucky Day is just getting noms out here, which is pretty cool. But... That's yeah. That's where I'm going with it. I'm gonna say I, 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 I hope Anderson Pack wins it actually, but um, and he probably will. Shout out Lucky Day though. Yeah, shout out Lucky Day though, and maybe I don't know Lizzo. I feel like Lizzo and her just like stand a better chance to win stuff like this because they're nominated in the major categories. So yeah, you know they're really cleaning up though. 
Mm -hmm. And Daniel, you know, it's a great showing. There's a lot of really exciting things happening in R&B right now. I feel like all of these artists, like you look at some of like the the alternative rock, those are like artists that have been around for a super long time. And they suck ass. Okay, oh. well, I don't know about that. They I wouldn't suck, go that far. They, yeah, they, um, they suck dumpster juice. <laughs> but these artists in the R&B section, like minus Andre 3000 and I guess like Gucci, like minus the features, yeah, have are, I guess, relatively speaking, new to the public. I'm sure they've been grinding for a super long time. But, like, that's cool. I think yeah. That, and I think that that demonstrates how much, like, exciting new stuff is coming out in R&B music right now. Yeah. And, I mean, for how new Anderson Pack kind of is, it's crazy how old he feels to me. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> like the father I never had. No, yes. shout out, Dad. I love you. <laughs> I know you watch all of these, so... <laughs> he does. He's, yeah. Shout out Tim. He thinks that me and Graydon are getting good at this, as we said. Yeah. He Joke's thinks, on him. I already won Best Podcast. He thinks that I'm romantically engaged with my workout buddy, so... Oh, he thinks you and Munch are getting Yeah, he's like, out? oh, well, I, you know, I'm glad that you have someone to spend time with. I'm like, Dad, it's not Munch like does, that. Munch does give immaculate top. Anyway, uh, best traditional R&B performance. BJ the Chicago Kid, time today. He's coming to Detroit on Friday. Uh... Steady Love, India R Ari. Ar- Ar- I honestly I don't know who this is, so I can't. I'm sorry. Jerome by Lizzo, Real Games Lucky Day, Built for Love, PJ Morton, Jasmine Sullivan. Let's go, PJ. That's where you're going? Mm-hmm. Speaking of uh PJ's munch. Anyway, I'm going Lucky Day on it, but Lizzo's gonna win it. Cool. That's what I think. Best R and B song could have been her and Bryce and Tiller. Uh, so this, wait, is this about, oh, this is about songwriters. Okay. Could have been her and Bryson Tiller. Look at me now, Emily King. It's my girl. I love Emily King. Are, are you guys like friends or is she just like a oh, girl? Oh, no. She, she, well, she's more than a woman to me. Wow. Anyway, uh, no guidance. More than a woman to me. Do, do. She's amazing, dude. I think that she deserves it. Okay. No Look gu- at that. Look just, at, just, just, sorry. Let me finish reading the list. Okay, okay. Uh, no Guidance, Chris Brown and Drake, Roll Samo, Lucky Day, Say So, PJ Morton, and featuring JoJo. Now, what were you going to say? Uh, Emily King, or I, you know, I think that PJ JoJo track is cool, and mm. jo- JoJo is sick. So those are my favorites, but I don't know. What do you think? I think that... Sadly, I feel like No Guidance is like kind of a monster in this category because it was like a really high charting Billboard song, still is. So, but I think that Roll Samo is probably my favorite song only because I've only listened to a little bit of Emily King and I don't know the song name, so I don't know if I know this one. Yeah, honestly, I love Emily King. It's not my favorite Emily King song. Mm. The Switch, maybe. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to say that No Guidance is probably going to win this one or could, actually, no, I'm going to go with, I think could have been, uh, her and Bryson Tiller is going to win it. And my favorite is probably the Lucky Day song, but that Chris Brown and Drake song is fine. I just don't like Chris Brown and I don't want him to win things. Yeah. Interesting. So that, but Emily King and the PJ Morton song, they both, were their songwriters of their own songs. Which yeah, like, respect. And Jeremy Moist. J Most. Hashtag J Most. He's not on Instagram. Oh. Sorry, I thought it said Moist. Anyway. J Moist. Uh, <laughs> That's my nickname. Hey. Uh, better, better, or sorry, best. Not just better. Best urban contemporary album. Uh, Apollo 11. Is that 11? Am I tripping? 21. 21. Apollo 21. <laughs> wow. You've okay, never survived in Rome. I know, dude. All right. Apollo 21. Steve Lacey, Because I Love You, Lizzo, Overload, Georgia and Muldrow, Saturn by Now, and uh, Being Human in Public by Jesse Reyes. I liked some of those Now songs that Graydon showed me. Yeah, Now is dope. And I like Steve Lacey. I'm glad that these are the nominations, I guess, for sure. I feel like shouldn't Anderson Pack be nominated here, or is that a rap? Would that be just like a rap album? I feel like it's like his fits better here. Derivative tracks, derivative of R and B. Yeah, that sounds like. It sounds like where a- Anderson Pack would be. I didn't like that album at all, though. But I'm just saying, you mentioned it earlier. 
I didn't you didn't like Ventura? No. Nah. Oh, you are tripping. Didn't Jesse Reyes open up for him on tour too? Anderson Pack. She, she I'm pretty sure uh, she did. Shit, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna say that Lizzo probably wins anything that she's in. I think that's probably the case. So for this, for the for the R and B stuff. So, but, but I feel like it'd be cool to see now or Steve Lacey win it again. Look at how stacked it is in the R and B category. It's exciting for you. Well, I don't like R and B that much. I'm you guys know that, but I mean, yeah. If you, you don't gotta, know that, you gotta awaken your soul, uh, bro. I have soul. It's just not. You're not a soldier. Uh, I'm not a soldier. Right. Uh, it's because of the shin splints and the bone spurs. Mm, Coward. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. I would never get drafted, dude. Ever. Yeah. I have food allergies, IBS, eczema, commitment issues. Anyway. Um, <laughs> flat feet. Flat feet. <laughs> Cold feet, uh, speaking of. Anyway. Do you think I would get drafted? I'm mm. not exactly. I have asthma and basic fear of intimacy. Right. Yeah. I think the, the latter would be a big issue. True. Okay. Because usually those, they, never mind. Uh, I would be a draft dodger. But I probably oh hell yeah! Even have I feel to like be. all millennials would be draft dodgers. You know what's so funny <laughs> is uh, there's this guy from Salido, and he was like he worked at the record store, and I was like palling around with him, and then he was talking about his band, and he told me that his band was called Draft Dodger, and when I was in high school, and I just like never thought about like what it meant. I was like, oh, that's just like a cool name. Like you just put two words together. But then I was like, like I know what a draft dodger is, but I didn't ever make the connection. So I literally just like thought it was like, that's a funny way to like put two words together. But that's what his band was. That's a pretty sweet band name. Yeah, draft dodger. Sounds like a hippie band name though. Or a president. I hate this hippie shit, dude. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, one, okay, best R&B album. One, one, two, three, BJ the Chicago Kid, Painted, Lucky Day. Ella May, Ella May. Paul, PJ Morton, and oh, Ventura's in the R&B category. Okay. Let's go. So Ventura's here. That's my vote. Ella May is going to win because it was a top 10 selling album of the year by female artists on the Billboard. It's got some hits on it. Which I can't really say for these other albums out out here. Hits well, wise. hits that Smokey Robinson tune definitely had was kind of a hit, right? Not on the not like Bill and never hit Billboard. There's no way. I feel like I hear it on the radio all the time. Really? Yeah. Uh, look at it. Look up if it ever hit Billboard because I doubt it for some reason. No, yeah, make I it know better. It yeah, no, no shot. I feel like it's because you're in Detroit. You probably hear it. You think so? Yeah. But yeah, um, the LMA song or the LMA uh, album has like like Shot Clock was like on that I think, some other stuff, definitely like actual album with like hits you know. Okay. No shot at my boy AP, but I don't know where to even find it, so maybe that means that it's not there. But yeah, I was right again. That's why I win all these awards. That song's sweet. All right, rap. This is the heat of the heat of it. Okay. Right here. Here's this is where right. This is what it's for you. This is for our hive mind fans right here. Here's where I go from irrelevant to barely even breathing. Mm. Okay. Best rap performance. Middle Child, J. Cole, Suge the Baby. Down Bad, Dreamville, and J. I. D. Or, or sorry, Dreamville with J. I. D. Boss, J. Cole, Earth Gang, Young Nudie, and Racks in the Middle, Nipsey Hustle, Roddy Rich, and Hip Boy. Clout Offset and Cardi B. How many of these songs do you know? Um, I think I know, how do you say it? Shug. Shug. Is that where it's like, <laughs> da, 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 cologne. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. There's one. And you know what, what's sad is ding, ding, ding. I only know that because they were talking about it on NPR. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that song. I've honestly probably heard all of these songs, but okay. like just that's the one I know by name. But I feel like Nipsey Hussle is going to win because the posthumous thing. Yeah, I think that that one ha- has a chance, but I think it's like usually performance. It's more. Oh, about- I know Down Bad. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know that you know, one too. Yeah. Yep. I think, and I, know, I think I've heard Clout at uh, do Planet Fitness. Do anything for Clout. I do anything for Clout. Yeah, I, I don't like that song. <laughs> yeah, that one sucks. I honestly, and I think I've heard Middle Child too. Yeah, I think Middle Child is going to win this with a soft 
prediction that should could take it. But Middle Child is like it's well put together, well written, well wrapped. It's gonna be that one. Down Bad is like a little chaotic. I feel like they'll maybe say, you know, it starts off with Young Nudie. And Young Nudie's like not, he's not like a bad rapper, but he's not like, he's not getting a Grammy nom on his own for best rap performance by any mean, by any means. And then like these other guys are really rapping, rapping, but honestly, and Suge is a crazy flow. It's, but it's, you know, it's more about the, like the personality and the spectacle and kind of like the, it's very trendy what DaBaby's doing right now. But yeah, I think Middle Child is the strong favorite here. Did you know what DaBaby's name was before it was DaBaby? The baby Jesus? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's so awesome. Dude, he used to wear a he wore a diaper to South by Southwest in 2017. <laughs> and was like, I'm the baby Jesus. <laughs> his he said that like Did his, the baby Jesus wear a diaper? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. You yeah, you didn't go to Catholic school, dude. He was yeah. He For was, all those holy shits. <laughs> yeah, dude. He was fucking filling diapers, dude. That's awesome. Holy water. You gotta get that absorbent material, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um Joseph was never around to change the diaper. That's why God had to step in. Stepdad of the year. Anyway, yeah, middle child. It's gonna Joseph, win. I'm not even going to say it. Yeah, you don't have to do that. Uh, be- Original cuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. Uh, best rap sung performance. Uh, so it's like has R&B melodies and rap. That's like the qualifications for this category here. Higher, DJ Khaled featuring Nipsey Hussle and John Legend. Drip Too Hard, Lil Baby and Gunna. Panini, Lil Nas X. Hmm. Ballin, Mustard, and uh, Roddy Rich, And The London, Young Thug, J. Cole, Travis Scott. Now, these ones I really am not too familiar with. Cool. I know Panini. All right. And I think I know Higher, too. Do you know Drip Too Hard? Probably. Someone that's like two hundred of this way. <laughs> anyway, doing all these shows. Anyway, uh, I don't see how there's R and B melodies and drip too hard, but I get why it's here. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like the Grammys are not gonna favor the ones that are actually like I don't know. Like I feel like drip too hard has the most impact of any of these songs. Uh, that in the London, and I feel like the the London could win it, but it'll probably this one will probably go to higher That's because of, be Ni- guess, of Nipsey Hustle and John Legend by. is so clean and lame. Yeah, exactly. Most of them for like Elizabeth Warren or something. Um, yeah, my my guess is for higher. Uh, cool. Best rap song, Bad Idea, Chance and Corday. I love that song. Gold Roses, Rick Ross and Drake. A lot, 21 Savage and J. Cole, Racks in the Middle, Nipsey Hussle, Roddy Rich, Hit Boy, and Suge the Baby. Um I think that Oh, interesting. I don't know. I feel like Suge could win this one, but my favorite is Bad Idea. That was my song of the summer. Really? Yeah. But you know how I am. Lame. So I'm going to go, uh, I think that a lot is probably going to win this one. It's going to be a lot. It's either going to be, okay, Rax in the Middle is probably going to get something here and there for Nipsey passing away. And it's a great song. I actually like really like that song. Uh, but I feel like a lot makes the most sense here. Like it's the one that's probably going to win. Um I don't know. I dep- it depends. This one's kind of a toss-up. A lot, Suge, and Racks in the Middle have a chance. These other two have no, no shot at all, in my opinion. Like, Bad Idea and Gold Roses, I just don't think they have any chance. But we'll see. Um, final prediction, my gut feeling says a lot wins this one. Okay. I think it's a really good look for YB and Corday, though. Oh, yeah. I really like sure. him a lot. Um, best Rap Album, Revenge of the Dreamers 3. By Dreamville. Champ- Championships, Meek Mill. I Am Is Greater Than I Was by 21 Savage. Igor, Tyler the Creator, and The Lost Boy, YBN Corday. I feel like Igor is probably going to win. I hope Igor wins because that's the best album here, and it's probably the favorite to win here. Um, I also feel like one thing that is worth 
uh, being mad about a few things with this category. First of all, Young Thug So Much Fun should be in this category. I don't understand how a compilation by Dreamville is above it. I don't understand how 21 Savage's album's above it, and I don't understand how Meek Mill's album's above it. And I don't like that Corday album like everybody else does, but I understand why it would appeal to like a lot of people that work for the Grammys. So I also, my second gripe is that none of these are in the album of the year uh, contention. So while being well-rounded in the sense that it has Lil Nas X's EP on there, there's no rap album in there. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. Igor should be up for album of the year. I think I agree with that. And so should uh, So Much Fun by Young Thug, which should also be in this category, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I don't know. This category is kind of a dud to me. I feel like they screwed this up. I feel like Future could have had one of his albums, like The Wizard could have been in here. I don't know. There's like just it just seems less at less in touch than they've tried to be in the past couple of years. So, whatever. Igor's gonna win this. I hope he deserves it. Anything else? Do you have anything to add, or should I? Um, no, we can continue. Cool. I don't want to be rude, you know. Country and no Mason Ramsey. Willie Nelson. Wow. No Mason Ramsey. Do not see any Mason Ramsey anywhere. I wanna do. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna be famous for something. That song's sweet. That song's sweet. All right, is that it? Jazz? Do you have anything to say about jazz? Well, can we look? What? What? Just out of curiosity. Okay. I probably don't. Jazz. Yeah, I don't know. Nah, I saw Esperanza Spalding in there, but. Oh. She's goatee. Goatee. <laughs> Very goatee. Uh, Latin. No, no little pump. No little pump. Okay. Rosalia. I hope Rosalia wins all of the Latin categories, actually. Um, let's see here. There's some other ones. I know there are. Children's. Uh, no Jacob Sigmund. Okay. Where are we at, Grammys? Comedy album. Let's oh. see. Uh, if we've heard any, Jimmy, Jimmy Gaff, sorry, Jim, Jimigan Gaffy, sorry, Jim Gaffigan, quality time, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, relatable, I hope that's a joke, right now, Aziz Ansari, seems like a weird time to nominate him, Son of Patricia by Trevor Noah, and Sticks and Stones, Dave Chappelle, let's go Dave, let's go Dave, I hope Dave wins. Yeah, Dave's not sitting next to G. Bush. No way, <laughs> dude. He's just telling us to give Trump a chance and then hating on trans people. So, um, but you know, I still got to go with Dave. I feel like it's the best one. I uh, Aziz's was like an apology episode. I haven't seen all of them, but just based on like them, I don't know. Their styles are all so different, which is crazy. I feel like Trevor Noah is, like, very classy and, like, clean cut. Yeah. So that's cool. Usually a little lame to me, though, too. Yeah, he's not, like, particular. I, like, when I watch Trevor Noah, I'm never, like, laughing out loud. I'm usually, like, coming away from it just, like, feeling good about the world. Mm. So maybe they'll give it to him. Yeah. There's, but it's, wow, it's, this is like pretty politically charged, which I think speaks to like where comedy is at now. Like I feel like comedians are always the ones to try to say something. I feel like comedians are always the ones that are in cars getting coffee. That's true. Um, music for visual media. Is there going to be any music videos in here? I just want to... I hate movies. Uh, I hate movies. I hate movies. Oh, best package. Let's see if there's... Uh, See if there's any big cocks on here. Best package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. Love those. I'm kind of... Uh, the guy from Game of Thrones is going to win best package, apparently. I don't know. Does he have... Is he packing? I don't know. Somebody said something about him having a big dong or something. Ooh. Um, What guy? I don't know, dude. Just relax, dude. It's a podcast. <laughs> um... Uh, I'm pissed that. Okay, yeah. I'm pissed that Robert Glasper isn't anywhere on here. Seems kind of weird. Mm. He put out an album this year. More like Robert Asper. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's cool. Uh, he's good at the piano or whatever. I don't know. He's great. 
Everybody loves him. Uh, producer of the year, non-classical. This one we can get into. Jack Antonoff. So he did, okay, let's see what he did real quick. Kevin Abstract's album, which is pretty good. Lover, Taylor Swift, Norman Effin Rockwell, and Red Hearse, which I don't know. Wow. Um, Dan Auerbach from the Black Keys, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's Auerbach, but who cares? Nah, Dan's got our back. Anyway, uh, The Angels in Heaven Done Signed My Name by Leo Bud Welch. Let's Rock by the Black Keys. Shout out Perry Shaw. He did the album cover for Let's Rock by the Black Keys, and he's a great graphic artist. They should start nominating graphic designers. That's for a great album idea. covers. We should hold beep, our beep, own. PSA. Start nominating album art, gr- album graphic artists for their album art. Um, Do you think when they chose when the Black Keys chose to name their album Let's Rock, they were doing it like ironically? <laughs> I think it is. Okay, that's cool. I mean, if not, it's also kind of badass, but hilarious yeah, for sure. Uh, Okay, John Hill, he did The Young, The Giant. Seems timely. Carly Rae Flexen. Uh, Khalid and John Mayer have a song together. That's interesting. Uh, John Mayer's been out there. He just did a song with Cat. I saw him like up on stage with Cassius, Cassius Clay. Cautious Clay. <laughs> no, I was saying it wrong. Mm. I think I'd rather do like a... I'd rather get injected with swine flu than listen to Khalid, though, so... I'll stick to John Mayer's solo stuff. I mean, oh, he this guy did something. I'm an anti vaxxer so can't say I agree. But you gotta get off your phone, bro. Dude, you're crazy. The you're switched addicted. Off. You're just addicted. Anyway, um, I'm addicted. Oh, disqualified. He did something for Imagine Dragons. So, Imagine Dragons, I really detest. Really? Oh my, they really annoy me. But dude, just like imagine dragons. You know what I mean? Oh my god, I just got it. Think All about right. It. Anyway, they should win. Uh, Phineas, one listing, Billie Eilish's album, which is m- immaculately produced, I will say. I've always been more of a Ferb <laughs> guy. <laughs> yeah. Incidentally, there okay, we go. this is a little bit of a jumping off point, but you know, Bowling for Soup did the Phineas and Ferb theme right. song. Have you seen what the lead singer from Bowling for Soup looks like now? Does he look like Ferb? Look it up, dude. It's it's kind of honestly a little bit unfortunate. Weight gain. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. I got scared there for a second. Yeah, he's packed on the pounds. But, hey, you know what? If he's happy, know, he does, he's it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, honestly. He looks kind of cool. Dude, Definitely he's one of my smash a beer with. He's one of my <clears throat> favorite songwriters from that era. That album was stacked. Shout out Good Charlotte. Almost. Okay. More like Great Charlotte. Cuz they're so good. Ricky Reed, Fiddler, Maggie Rogers, Lizzo, The Weeknd and Travis Scott. Oh, it's a SZA. Okay. Sure. Um I think Aunt Jackanoff is going to win this one. Or, sorry. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Jack Antonoff. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, probably. Wait, Ricky Reed? Who did... I just read those ones. Maggie Rogers and Marin Morris, Missy Elliott and Lizzo. Some Lizzo stuff. He did Truth Hurts. Ross Golan. That's cool. I still feel like, I mean, I know I just read some, like, names of, like, rappers or whatever, so these people have, like, produced for rap, but I feel like there's, like, no rap producer in this this year. Is that separate? Do they do it separate? No. Producer, non-classical. I feel like that's, like, well, like, last year it was, like, Pharrell, Hit Boy, Kanye, and this year it's, like, Jack Antonoff, Dan Auerbach, and John Hill, and then Phineas and Ricky Reed. Like, yeah, that's interesting. It's such a different beast, though, I feel like. Sample-based yeah. music versus, like, music with drums and guitars and shit. Yeah. It's just weird that it seems like the whole category is flipped. Like, it wasn't, like, a few here and there. Like, yeah, it that seems is like weird. It's just, like, yeah, but whatever. It'd be cool to see Phineas win it because it's just, like, one album that's, like, pretty, like, amazingly produced. But I feel like Jack Antonoff did, because he did Lover and Norman Rockwell... 
those are like both albums nominated in major categories. So mm -hmm. that's where I see it standing out. So that's where I stand on it. Okay. What do you think? Do you have any prediction? Um. Yeah, I feel like probably not Phineas, but that's pretty sick that he was nominated. Like, that really speaks to how good that album must be. I really should listen to it. I can't believe you haven't listened to it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we done? I think this that's it for all this stuff. I mean, like, I don't know, all these other ones nobody really cares about. I don't know about that. No, like, zero people care about it. My friend was nominated for one of these last year. Like, I cared. Ugh, well. Oh, best Shout music video. Co. Best music video. We care about that because we make music videos. Yes, we do. Not Jake. He doesn't make them. I do. The Royal We. Uh, we've Got to Try by the Chemical Brothers. Haven't seen it. This Land by Gary Clark Jr. Haven't seen it. Cellophane by FKA Twigs. Did see it. Good video. Old Town Road official movie. Not that good, but crazy high budget. Shout out Rico Nasty because she's in it. And Glad He's Gone by Tove Lo. Didn't see it. So I don't have much of an opinion here. Cellophane should win it. Uh, I like that We've Got to Try. I think it's crazy that they're coming back after all these years. Didn't Did their tour sell out, out like in two seconds? Did you see it? Oh, right. Right. Welcome to My the Black Chemical Band. Romance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. You know, I haven't, seen, I haven't seen any of them except Old Town Road. And all that I can say about that is like something looks off about Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, interesting. Don't know quite what you mean there, but... Uh, I want Robbie Ray Stewart back. I think Doorstop should win. That's true. That is a great video. Excellent. And I did not tell him to say that. Uh, best music film. Again, hate movies. So Wait. Wait, shouldn't A Star, Star is Born, born? Be Yeah, wait, it won. Like, it was nominated for Best Album, but not... Wait. Eh, whatever. I want to see that. I did... This is interesting. Um, that... Paul Thomas Anderson directed the Tom York movie? I think he just did the... He did the music for it. For Tom York did the music for a Paul Thomas Anderson movie. Oh. And it... Oh, okay. I didn't realize it was a movie album. I thought that Tom York just... No, it was okay, a movie cool. album, yeah. I listened to High and Dry today. Mm. And... Wow. It's a good song. Yeah, it took me back. Yep. Yeah. Unrelated. All right. Well, those are our predictions. Uh, in the comments, let us know yours. And uh, actually, before we do that, I do want to say uh, I have one prediction. I'm going to ask you for one for next year for the Grammy noms. What is your prediction for something that is going to happen by the time, like the next, like what's a, either like some sort of like sea change or like a specific thing, like a specific artist you think is going to be nominated or an album or something the cutoff is, by the way, is like all or September first, I think, and so any album after that is fair game. Oh, from this year. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. What maybe? What about the Kanye album? Do you think that's gonna get a look in the gospel category? Since we didn't even talk about it this time, I think it has a shot. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's gonna be kind of controversial because the thing that I've heard pushback like against that is that it's not gospel like not really in the vein of what gospel music is. Eh, other I don't know. I feel like generally it's been pretty accepted by the gospel community for the most part. It seems like I feel like the general public hates it way more than they do. Joel Osteen's having him over, so well, you know. You know he sure does no gospel music, he right? He sure does. Yeah. He's clapping on one and three. Oh yeah. Um yeah, whatever. Clap whenever you want, honestly. <laughs> well, I, do you have any other predictions? I'm still thinking. Yeah, my prediction is that I think Phoebe Bridgers is going to be uh, oh, yeah. nominated next year. And, like... I think, yeah. Yeah. So I think that she, like... I was kind of surprised that Better Oblivion Community Center didn't get, like, something on this one just because it felt like a bigger moment for an alternative album. Um, I thought it might have been, like, thrown a bone for some reason. But I thought it would have been, like... I would have been surprised to see it at the same time. Like, I was, like, going to be, like, heck yeah to see it. And she's like one half of that project, but I think as a solo artist, she's going to explode with her next project and be 
Grammy ta- Grammy conversation artist. I wonder. But that's my prediction. I wonder if Tom Mish is going to get a Grammy look. I wonder what his next album's going to be. That probably that makes sense actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Other than that, Young Thug snubbed, Wicked Face snubbed. Those are my two biggest snubs. Whoa. Should have gotten them, dude. All right. Anything else? Any closing words for the people? Do you want to say anything for to to the um. The Hive Mind fans, while you have them here captive? Um, let's see. I'm freezing my dick off. Right. Uh, and I got a shrimp dick. And I got a shrimp dick. All right. What's the other one? Don't you have a new one? Is there another one? I want Milk Mommy. I want Milk Mommy. That's a good one. And, uh, uh, it burns when it I pee. It burns when I pee. <laughs> yeah. So I those are, diversify. Yeah. So those are the catchphrases if you've uh, seen them in the vlogs. But, um... Yeah, this has been the High Mind Podcast. Uh, don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you if you like this and you want more. Like and subscribe. And uh, go to at Ronnie James Dio on Instagram and congratulate Graydon for his marriage and also his sister's marriage. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, coincidence. And um, and the birth the birth of their two children with three legs. Right. And uh, total. Total. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, at Riley John Savage at After Dinner Sig. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.